one of these days I'll be big enough for a Range Rover. As you might have noticed, I'm driving the new fifth generation Range Rover. British icon, design icon, and ambassador of modern British luxury that's become popular right across the globe. Launched in 1970 to a call from customers for a more sophisticated, but still rugged way to get them on and off the farm, the original three-door Range Rover wasn't just a sales success, but arguably invented the luxury SUV segment all those years ago. Yet while Range Rovers have always impressed with their rugged capability, it's the iconic design that's since become just as important to its modern day clientele. But all the key design traits are there. It's got a floating roof, though you can't really tell it because this one's got a black roof, with blacked out pillars, but everything's a bit sharper and a bit crisper. We've got new LED headlights, we've got flush door handles, they were like that before, but the door skins go right up to the window. That's really tricky to do. We've also got a solid piece of glass that goes right to the tailgate, and it's got something called a boat tail. Now a boat tail is there to make a big car like this feel a little bit lighter on the road, and it's something that Rolls-Royce also do. Now I know what you're thinking, it looks broadly the same as the last one, and the one before that. But Range Rover is a brand in itself, so just like the Porsche 911, its design is ripe for constant evolution, rather than any dramatic revolution. Under the skin, however, Land Rovers had to be a little bit more ambitious to keep it up to date. The modern Range Rover has been designed to appeal to all the market that's now so popular in, which explains why there's no less than six different engine options available. At the more traditional end of the spectrum, you'll find a pair of straight six diesel engines with either 300 or 350 horsepower, plus a straight six petrol with 400 horsepower. All of these engines utilize a mild hybrid system, which in this case is more about streamlining the engine's operations than boosting its performance or offering any zero emissions motoring. For the full hybrid experience, Land Rover has upgraded the plug-in Range Rover's powertrain by fitting a new and more powerful electric motor, driven by a comparatively huge 38.2 kilowatt hour battery that's good for up to 70 miles of electric range. Now this, for context, is bigger than the battery pack you used to find in a BMW i3. This is also paired to a six-cylinder petrol engine, which replaces the previous model's four, and should gain good yields in terms of refinement and in drivability. Finally, there's a brand new V8 petrol engine borrowed from BMW no less, that swaps the previous car's supercharger for two turbochargers, producing 523 brake horsepower. As for engine choices, I definitely think this D350 is probably the best bet. It's smooth, it's talky, it's effortless, and it perfectly matches the car's personality. The alternatives, the petrol six cylinder, can be a little revvy and also super thirsty. The V8 feels a bit wasteful, and the plug-in hybrids, well, they're really much better than they used to be, especially with their new inline six cylinder engine, but, they're big and they're heavy, specifically. And they only really seem to work in town. I'm not really sure about you, but the notion of driving a Range Rover as a town car doesn't really appeal. And there's another issue with the plug-in hybrid, and it comes down to basic efficiency. On paper, the figures might look good, but if you actually take into account its energy consumption, whether that be in full EV mode, or its fuel economy when driving around with a depleted battery, then things start looking very inefficient and therefore very expensive. But then this is an expensive car, starting at just over 100 grand for the entry-level D300 SE and topping out at nearly 200 for a long wheelbase V8-powered SV. And what do you get for your extra money? More sumptuous materials, intricate wooden inlays, porcelain volume knobs, but let's be honest, the best bits about a Range Rover aren't the trinkets but the fundamentals found right across the range. Is the fifth generation Range Rover as good as its predecessors? Absolutely, no doubt. But we would say that you stick to a fairly reasonable spec and you stick to a diesel engine. So there's no question that we love a Range Rover, but in this case, less really is more. Who'd have thought? For more videos, click on the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you want to add yet one more notification to your weekly tally.